This book has a story to tell, but it begins in the pages prior to the famous line, in the beginning. And while it's growing less and less common to see an actual book, KCRA 3 anchor Lisa Gonzalez found this particular book here, near the intersection of Broadway and 34th Street. As I was going to my car, I noticed a Bible in the road. A lost Bible. Right about here, right in the middle of Broadway, upside down with papers and notes falling out of it. So I grabbed it and quickly got in my car. On the front cover, an address label. Which is how the Bible ended up with me. We found a phone number associated with the address, but it was a wrong number, and we just weren't sure that the people still lived there. But one thing was for sure. The Bible and the people who owned it still had a story to tell. Inside the book's first pages were dates, the history of the owner, a woman named Veronica. And it's very personal information, from deaths of family members to her marriage, birth of her daughter who ended up in law school, her husband leaving, and the date Veronica later tracked him down to serve the divorce papers. Well, I could just tell there were, there were so many highlighted areas and just all of the notes that fell out of it that I kind of just tried to put back in. But also in the significant dates, a recent marriage at a church, Austerlitz Baptist Church which we called, thanks to a list of church leaders and their numbers found inside the Bible. The church, you see, is one of those connections this Bible makes, and it's in New Orleans. That church led us to Robert Parker. My father was a Pullman porter, and he was able to get us passage uh, to San Francisco, where we settled in 53. Robert Parker would know all about Austerlitz Baptist Church of New Orleans. It's his family's church. There are five churches in New Orleans that are recognized as a family church, and we are one of them. Austerlitz dates back to the 1800s. It was one of the first Louisiana churches founded by an African-American congregation. My grandfather became an associate pastor at that church in the 1930s. Veronica was married in that church, and the life event listed in her Bible gave us her maiden name. Hello, I was trying to go hold up Veronica. Is this she? Which led to a phone number. You're missing a Bible. I am. Which led to Veronica. I noticed it was gone the next day. I must have lost it on a Saturday. I was doing an event there at my church, City Church Sacramento in Oak Park. Which is how Lisa Gonzalez found the Bible in that Oak Park neighborhood. For a week, Veronica had been searching everywhere for it. I thought, well, I had left it in my husband's car or I left it in my study or my car, um, but it just was not there. And so all week long, I kept looking and asking and emailing people, have you seen my Bible? She did forgive us for reading her personal history, and it is personal. After all, it brought her Bible back to her. It is well-worn. Uh, it must feel good having it back in your hands. It, it does. Thank you. As you read, um, it, there were ups and downs, as everyone has. But this Bible had a lot more to say, more than even its dog-eared pages revealed. It's traveled the world with Veronica. I've been to Honduras with it, Guatemala, Peru. Um, so I, you know, Mexico. I mean, I've been places with this Bible, Hawaii. And so uh, it just meant a lot. It meant so much to me. And those trips were mission trips taken throughout the years, helping dig wells for clean water. In my instance, I um, just taught the women and the children in the village about water hygiene. Trips with the man listed in the significant events in that Bible. I came to Sacramento in 2010. At that time, I was working for Assemblymember Noreen Evans, okay. who had just won a, a state senate seat. And working in Sacramento, she was able to meet the man she'd had a date with once when she lived in Vallejo. Well, actually, it was a blind date. That's right, Robert Parker. The same Robert Parker whose family church is Austerlitz Baptist Church in New Orleans is Veronica's husband. She wanted to get married there, and uh, I asked my cousin, who is the pastor there? And he was delighted to have us, and of course, the family welcomed us to come there. And Robert even remembers the day Veronica lost her Bible. Oh, do I remember that day? In the days that followed, every 15 minutes, have you found my Bible yet? I really felt like I had lost a piece of me because there were significant dates, family members who had passed on, my mother, my father, my uncle, 
um, you know, um, marriages, births, divorces. I'm glad you have your Bible. So <laughs> and weeks after the Bible was lost, Veronica finally met the woman who rescued it. There is a, a legacy, a, a lineage, a connecting the dots, you know, if you will, for other people to come and find and look. Which also brought a number of people together, something the Parkers don't think is a coincidence. And not only has it, the book come back, but I've met another set of people who I now have a connection with, and I don't take that lightly. It, it boasts my divine faith because this didn't just happen. There's no circumstance here. There's no serendipity. All of this was meant to be, and I see that clearly. Normally, we tell the stories, but this time, a little red book did it for us, leading us on the ups and downs of one person's life. It led Veronica around the world. And though Robert doesn't call it this, we will. It led to a serendipitous meeting with two journalists who just happened to be storytellers eager to tell her tale. In Sacramento, Dave Manocherry for Common Ground.